Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and let's continue with the series on NoSQL. Now till this point we have talked about Cassandra, right? That's one of the uh, NoSQL databases we have. So basically we are using this cloud service called DataStax Astra, which is implemented on open source Apache Cassandra, right? And then we were able to do some queries. We, we loved uh, SQL, right? Because it matches with uh, SQL as well. And now the point is we are happy with SQL because somewhere we are using tables, we are using this amazing features of uh, distributed systems, right? But then we have one issue. Now, if you remember from the first video, we are talking about NoSQL and we mentioned that if you want to store a non-structured data, because SQL is famous for their structured content, right? Because in RDBMS, we store everything in a structure format. But if you talk about the real world or the current world, we normally deal with unstructured data a lot, maybe social media or if you talk about this uh, IoT devices for AI and for the doesn't matter which data I'm talking about, most of them are unstructured. How do you store uh, unstructured data in a database? Now basically we have one type which we have discussed in the first video itself, which is document type. So normally what you do is, if you want to store data, one of the best format to work with now because of the fame of JavaScript is JSON. So you send your data from client to server in a JSON format. So what if you can just take that JSON and save in the database as it is? The advantage would be you are storing data in a JSON format and you're fetching data in JSON format and a client, which might be a website or an app, needs a JSON data, that's it. Okay, uh, so how do we do it? So what we're trying to achieve is we want to fetch data from a client in a JSON format and then that JSON data will go to the server. The same JSON data will be stored in a database. Now, the only problem is if you talk about Cassandra, it is kind of a structured database because it evolved in that format because we wanted to use SQL. And if you don't have a structured content, it is difficult to fire the queries. So we have to find a solution in between. So maybe a client side, we have to say, hey, go with a structured content. But we can't do that in this real world, right? Because every day you get new updates. Maybe you want to add new text field. Maybe you want to add a new menu bar. You can't stop a client by saying, hey, we'll not accept any more changes. Of course, that will be happening. The data will be unstructured. Maybe you have to do something on the back end. Maybe you have to get the data in JSON format and understand the structure of it so that you can create a new table. Kind of, we can do that. Or maybe let's not take pressure of this on anyone not on the client, not on the server. Somewhere in between, we have to find a solution and that solution is Stargate. Now Stargate is an open source gateway which will help you to save your unstructured JSON data into a Cassandra database. Beauty, right? Okay, that means you have to learn a new tool now. So don't worry. In fact, we are using DataStax Astra which has Stargate in build. Oh. Okay, now things are a bit easy. So we don't have to convert JSON into structured content. It will be happening by default. Okay, now how do we do that? So it's very easy actually. You just have to go to the Astra database. And if you remember, we have created this Telisco database where you can, so you know, when you go to the dashboard, you will get an option of click on connect. And the moment you do that, you will see some options. You will see uh, connect using an API. We have three options, document API, GraphQL API, and REST API. Now, these are actual implementation of Stargate APIs, so we will be using them. Okay, so what we are trying to achieve here is the target is to have a JSON data which you will be storing directly into a Cassandra database. Simple stuff, right? But before that, I just want to do one more thing. I just want to create a key space, uh, a different key space this time. I will say this is the Lisco doc because we are working with document type now. I will say save. Now, once you click on save, it might take some time to uh, create that namespace. So we'll just wait for it. Maybe we'll, we'll come back to this and we'll check. By the time it is happening, let's me, let me click on connect again. And we have an option, right? We can go for document API, we can go for GraphQL API, we can go for REST API. Uh, for this type, for document type, I will be going with document API. And here, the only thing is, how do you use this? So we have a service, which is a cloud service, right? And then we have to create a client application now, maybe in, in React or maybe Android application. So that's what you have to do, right? So basically we have database. 
So between database and client, you'll be having the server as well. Between server and client, you'll be having the front end. It might be a simple web application, React application, or maybe Android application, iOS application, doesn't matter. You'll be having some interface. So here, I don't want to create those interfaces, right? Ultimately, the client or the, the front end or the back end deals with the JSON data, right? The rest calls. Now to achieve that, uh, if you don't want to create a client, we can use Swagger UI. So how do we use Swagger UI? It's very simple. It gives you those links to work with. Let me show you those links. So you can click on this thing, which you will get as well. You, uh, of course, you will get a different address. I will click on this link and it will open a Swagger UI for me with all the options. Now in, in document type, whenever you have different data, of course, you represent one data with one JSON document, right? So normally you call that JSON as a document. Now you might have multiple documents. So you might be having a document inside a document. It's like JSON inside a JSON. Or maybe you will be having multiple JSON data. Possible, right? So when you have multiple documents, we call them as collections. When you have multiple documents, we say that's a collection or collections, right? So the first thing you will do is you will create a collection. But before that, I just want to check if my key space is created. That's there. You can see we have telescope doc as a key space that is working. Let's go back to our Swagger UI. Now this is where you can create a document here. So what document I'm talking about? So let's say I want to create the collection of aliens, right? So that's what we are doing now for a long time, right? So let's say we have multiple aliens. In general, aliens means programmers for me. Uh, not in general, but specific to me, I prefer to call programmers aliens. Okay, come back here. So the first thing you will do is you will fetch your collections, but then we don't have a collection yet. So let me create a new collection. So click on this and oh, oh, okay. So when you click on tryout, you can see we have multiple options. I have not clicked on tryout yet. It is asking you for the token. Now, why do you need a token? We need token because my data is stored in a cloud service, which is secured by my username password. And then I'm doing this online. And then you can see my address here. You can see all this data. Maybe you will simply enter this and you will get access to it. So to avoid it, we have this system where you can, where it will ask you for a token. So basically, every time you work with this, you have to create a token, specifically for every account. Example here, what I can do is, uh, if you want to create your token, in fact, if you remember, uh, I don't know if you have seen that or not, before clicking on Swagger, so there was an option of creating a token. So you can do that. Uh, you can see you can create a token here. Otherwise, you can take a long form. You can just click here and click on organization settings. And that's, okay, do I have a token? I will say token management and here I will create a token. So for this specific use, we will need a administrator user and click on generate token. And you can see it will create a token for me. Okay, so when you do that, you will you can see you got a token. So you simply copy this token. And of course, after this session, I will be deleting this token, so don't use it. Uh, I will just paste my token here. Now this is a token I'm going to use, right? So let's save it there. And now if I go back to UI, this is where you have to enter the token first. So copy, paste, enter. The next thing it will ask you for the namespace ID. Now the namespace ID is what you created there, like right? the key space. And the key space is Telisco doc. The next thing it will ask you for the name of a collection in the format of JSON. Uh, it's very simple. I will say name colon aliens. That's it. And click on execute. It will create a collections for you that with the name aliens. Okay. And you can see we got a code which is 201, which is created. So it is working. Uh, in fact, if something goes wrong, it will give you some other codes as well. But as of now, we got our collection. How do you verify if you've got a collection? It's very simple. Click on get. And here again, uh, I mean, if you can see, just me, let me just highlight you all these options here. For different requests, we have different types here. Example, for creating a collection, you got post. For fetching the collection, you have get here, right? That's how the REST API works. Now, if you are very new to REST API, I would suggest you to check out my video on REST API. You will find the link in the description or in the i button. Uh, but here we got uh, post and we got get. So if, if you go back to get, because I want to fetch the collections now, uh, with the same access code with the namespace, which is the disco doc. And then I will say execute. And you can see we got our data. This is a response. I don't know if you can see this. Let me increase the font size. We got a data, name aliens, and yeah, things are good. 
Okay, so basically you got a collection as well. Now this is where you can also add a collection. I mean, we, we got aliens, right? Now it's time to add more data. And we'll do that in the next video. So we got, uh, so we now we understood that using Stargate, we can basically save our JSON into Cassandra. And then if to use those services, I mean, to use the database, we are using Swagger UI. Of course, you can, use, you can create a front end as well, or maybe you can also use Postman, which is a very famous uh, tool. But then we are using Swagger UI just to make it simple. And we were able to create a collections. Now in this collections, I can store multiple documents. And how do we do that? We'll see in the next video. So I hope you are enjoying this series. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos. Bye-bye.